Good morning, everybody, and welcome to another education station. Today we have Tegan, one of our other educators, with an animal, and then I have my animal as well. Before we get started, though, remember if you guys like learning all these things and you want to make sure that your friends know all these cool stuff that you are learning as well, be sure to share, like, and comment, and as you comment, we'll be answering questions throughout our program. So today, as you can see, mine is a little uh, active and walking around for y'all. We have our Tenric Violet here, and then we have our hedgehog over at Tegan's table named Pixie. And so with our Tenric, we figured we'd give you a couple quick information about the Tenric versus the hedgehog, and then go from there. So for our Tenric, I know you guys are probably thinking in your head, I have no idea what a Tenric is. Most people don't. Usually when I bring her out at programs, their first guesses are either hedgehogs or porcupines. Um, Tenrics are very unique animals that are found only on the island of Madagascar. That's why a lot of people don't actually know about them. Honestly, before I worked at a zoo, I had no idea what a Tenric was. Um, but these guys are pretty awesome. Like I said, they're only found on the island of Madagascar. As you see, they are a type of animal that has little spikes all over their back, and that's their form of self-defense. That's what protects them. These guys are insectivores, which means that insects are going to be their primary diet, so they really like to eat their bugs. And later today, we might actually be able to show you what Violet looks like eating her bugs. And then the unique thing a lot of people don't think when they look at this little girl is she is actually a really good climber. Half the time when I can't find her in her enclosure, she is up in the far corner of her little hide. And I think that it's weird, but it's cute. But yeah, she likes to <laughs> climb a lot. <laughs> what are some quick facts that you can give us on Pixie over there? Yeah, so Pixie is an African pygmy hedgehog, which means in the wild, a wild hedgehog you would find in Africa. So she comes from a bit of a different habitat than the Tenrix. And um, that means she's gonna be a little bit more terrestrial than our Tenric as well. She's not as good of a climber. She likes to hide, um, which you'll probably see her do. She'll tuck herself under the blanket here. Um, and Pixie's about four years old. She would have been born in 2015. And she likes to eat a lot of the same things as that Tenric. Um, so here at the zoo, she gets some cat food along with some vegetables. And then her treats are those bugs, like those crickets and those mealworms. Um, so here at the zoo, um, on our programs, a lot of people had mentioned that their cute little noses look like little chocolate chips or Hershey's Kisses. And so we decided that uh, we would start naming all of our hedgehogs after different candies. And so that's how she got her name is Pixie. We've also had Nestle and Runt. Um, they are very, very sweet. Um, so both of these animals are gonna be nocturnal, but you, you might notice that Pixie here has bigger eyes than our Tenric does. And that's because she relies more on her eyesight. Her eyes are better designed to see at nighttime. Whereas our Tenrix, they are gonna rely more on their nose. But as prey animals, you can see they really like using their noses and that's really advantageous in the wild. And so awesome. with Pixie's nose, as you see, she has that really big one and then Violet here has a smaller nose, but it is just as strong. There's also something very unique about Violet. She is actually closer related to an elephant and a manatee than she is a hedgehog or a porcupine. I always like to make people guess at my programs what their closest relative are. Um, so that's always a fun one to surprise people. If you look at her nose though, that's where you can see a little bit of the elephant. She has what's known as a slightly prehensile nose, which is a big word that means that she can kind of move her nose on her own. We can't do that. Uh, Pixie over there can't do that either, but Violet, if you watch her when she's smelling, she can just barely move the tip of her nose around a little bit and that helps her figure out where her food is really well. Do we have any questions yet? Um, let me see. While well, Tegan is looking, I didn't mention Violet's age. Violet is about five years old and her birthday is actually coming up. Her birthday is June 26th, so she will be six here pretty soon. All right. Um, so do any of the, or do either of these animals like to play with toys? That is a good question. Um, toys, not so much in the sense of dogs like to chew on their bones, but they do like different enrichment. Enrichment is what we call items that we give them that allows them to kind of uh, have something new in their house. Just like you would get bored if you just sat in the room every day with nothing changing. So we give them new things every day. 
And Violet likes some different enrichment, like she has a little wheel that she can run on. Uh, Pixie over there, she loves it when she gets different fabrics. Those are her favorite enrichment because then she can kind of snuggle up in those. Uh, but Violet also, a unique thing about Violet is she actually takes what's called sand baths. So if we give her a bucket of sand, she will go sit in the middle of it. She'll grab a handful and she'll just rub it all throughout her quills and that helps her keep her quills nice and healthy and clean. So she does sand baths. That's probably her favorite toy that she has. Wonderful. How about, um, so some people know that these could be pets. Um, they're popular um, in that way. Uh, what's something that people, like what are things that people should know if they were to have one of these for a pet? Hopefully you're a night owl, if that's the case. Um, because like we mentioned, these guys are nocturnal, which means that they are going to be awake primarily at night. You see that they're up and about right now. That's because our girls are program animals. So they're used to us waking them up randomly throughout the day for a program, and then they go back to sleep typically on the walk back to, the, to their house. But normally these animals are going to be up at night. Um, making sure that you do your research, as we've always said, you wanna make sure that you know properly what you need to take care of them because yes, they eat bugs, but there's also other things that they need to stay healthy. So these guys also get something called an insectivore pellet, just like you have dog pellets, cat pellets, all this. It is specially designed to help give the nutrients that insectivores need. Um, and so you wanna make sure that you, you have enough to properly make sure their nutrition is balanced and they are cared for properly. But being a night owl is a good thing. If you get a nocturnal animal, it's gonna only be awake at night. <laughs> Very good. Um, so uh, I, we might have mentioned this already, but how similarly are these um, animals related? That is a great question. They are not actually going to be related at all. So tenrics are found only on the island of Madagascar. They don't have mice, possums, all these different things that eat bugs like we do. So that's where tenrics come into play. That's what uh, Madagascar has instead. There are about 30 different species of tenrics. Uh, some are as small as Violet here, who is our lesser hedgehog tenric. And some are about three times her size, even larger than our hedgehog over there called greater tenrics. There's a lot of different species, some with long nose, some with long tails. They all live on the same island versus uh, Pixie over there. She is a hedgehog and they are found on Africa, so they're not going to be on Madagascar. Um, and their closest relatives are going to be other species of hedgehogs versus tenrics are not related to hedgehogs at all. Their closest relatives are going to be uh, manatees and elephants, which no one would expect looking at this little thing. <laughs> <laughs> right, so as prey animals, um, uh, what would their predators be? That's a good question. Probably, uh, most likely, their predators are going to be birds of prey, such as hawks, eagles, uh, things like that. On Madagascar, the largest predator uh, mammal is going to be a fossa, which is probably about this long, and it's like a long cat, basically. So it's not going to be very large, but they still have to worry about them. Uh, birds are going to be best adapted to be able to prey on these guys, though, because you see all these spikes on the back? When these guys get threatened, when they're scared, what they will do, both hedgehog and tenric alike, is they will actually kind of hunch their shoulders up and they will stretch their back muscles, which will make all of their quills stand up. Um, and so when Violet does it, her spikes kind of just stick straight up. When Pixie does it, hers actually go in a bunch of different directions. So hers are a little bit more outstanding. <laughs> um, but the reason for that is usually when animals are looking at food, they are not going to go for things that are spiky. And so when these guys, their entire backs are covered with spikes, most animals will look at that and kind of leave it alone. Uh, think about it as a meatball. If you're gonna go eat food, do you wanna eat a normal meatball or do you wanna eat a meatball with a bunch of toothpicks sticking out of it? <laughs> That's how most animals look. But uh, birds of prey with their tough skin on their talons and on their feet, they can sometimes pick it up and get to the soft underbelly. So they're gonna be their primary predators, both for hedgehogs and tenrics. So what do their uh, what do their bellies look like? Could you describe their bellies? Mm -hmm. Their bellies are nice and soft and fluffy. I don't really, there you go. She's not used to being showing her belly. <laughs> yeah. And the same see, with uh, Pixie over there. They're just nice, soft, fluffy bellies. Uh, that's usually for most animals the soft spot, so to say, the spot that is most vulnerable, most. Um, 
of the most problematic when they do get in fights is if their belly gets hit because that is going to be the softest area on all animals. You are very active yeah. today, ma'am. <laughs> um, so Susan's wondering, what would happen if we were to release them into the wild? I get her real quick. Uh, yes, so these guys have both been hand reared since they're babies, so they would not do very well in the wild. Uh, we'd stick them outside and they would think, cool, recess time, I've never done this, this is awesome. Find all the bugs that they want. And then when it comes to, say, it's raining, it's cold, uh, especially since these guys are from Africa and Madagascar, they're not going to really know what to do with that. So they would think that's fun for a while, but they would get really tired of it really quickly when they realize that they don't have humans to take care of them anymore. So these guys are not domesticated, or at least uh, Violet is not domesticated like our dogs and cats, but they are used to being uh, handled by humans. So they're used to us taking care of them. They're used to getting things handed to them when they need them. So they would not do very well if we just released them into the wild. Awesome. Um, what are their quills made of and are they hollow? That is a great question and I'm a science nerd so I like things like this. Uh, their <laughs> quills are actually made out of keratin which is a big word that means a, that is the same material that our hair is made out of, same material that our nails are made out of, uh, rhino horns, uh, scales on a snake, all these different things. Keratin can be found on almost every single animal in the world in some form or fashion. That's my science nerdy fact. Um, but pretty much their hair is like you took some glue gel and you spiked your kid's hair and it just stayed. So it's, it is really tough. It <laughs> is going to be uh, spiky, but it's not going to be like a porcupine quill. So if you guys have watched these before and we've had our porcupines, we've mentioned that the porcupines have kind of a little hook or a barb on the end. That's not going to be the case with the Tenric and the hedgehog. So you've seen, I've been able to touch her. I've been able to pick her up, move her around. Uh, if I did that with our porcupines, I'd probably be taking my hands away with a couple of quills in them. Uh, theirs are going to not have that barb on the end. Theirs are going to be more like a bunch of toothpicks sticking out of their back. So that is what theirs feel like. So you can touch them and be gentle or you can hit them really hard and it will hurt you. But we don't do that. We like them being gentle with us. <laughs> How about um, the wild populations of these? Are they wild populations doing well or are they a threatened species? Uh, that is a good question that I should know that I don't. I know <laughs> any animal in Madagascar is going to be um, in, is going to be on the list somewhere just because Madagascar is their only home. But I don't believe the Tenric populations are overly low. It's just that's the only place they're found, so they do keep an eye on them. Um, hedgehogs, I believe that they're least concerned. That would be something I will have to look up and answer, though, again, because I'm not 100% sure. That's my guess. So least concerned and probably at least um, a concern of some sort. I will look right. that up and let you know. Awesome. Well, I think that kind of wraps it up for questions. Is there anything else you wanted to mention before yes. we Yes. So do you know any weird, gross facts about our hedgehog? A lot of kids love weird, gross facts, so we have a lot of them. Um, and hedgehogs have a really cool one, if you know that. Yes, yes. So um, one really cool fact about the hedgehogs is that they do something called self-anointing. So if they find a really strong smell, whether that's a good smell or a bad smell, they're going to um, coat themselves in that smell. So if they find like a substance, they'll rub that on their quills and on their body um, to make them smell like whatever that smell is. So that might be advantageous, you know, if you've got a predator and you've got a stinky animal, predators might not want to eat you because you don't smell good. Um, but maybe it would be nice to smell some smell like something that smells delicious to you as well. So that's and just a it's fun very fact. unique if you've never seen them do it before because it's kind of like they're foaming at the mouth and they make their saliva very bubbly and sometimes mm -hmm. even green. So it's kind of uh, kind of funny to watch if you don't know what it is and it's really weird. Uh, <laughs> but it's that's always a fun thing that I love telling kids because it grows fast for the win. Uh, and then my final little fact I have for these guys, I will actually get Violet's food out because I did say that I would feed her for you guys. Um, so I'll get her food out while I'm giving that fact so you guys can see what her nose is like when it comes to catching her insects. If you want to look the other way, ma'am, your food is that way. <laughs> there we go. She's smelling them. She's just a little distracted. <laughs> There's a lot of new smells in this room. There you go. 
Um, and so my final fact that I was gonna have for these guys, there we go, she's going after it now, is a lot of people look at them and they see all these spines in there. And if you're a mom, you're probably thinking, oh my lord, what do these poor hedgehog and tenric moms go through? Um, and they don't actually have to give birth to them with spikes, so don't worry, they don't, they don't go through that pain. Uh, most porcupines, hedgehogs, tenrics, all of that, they actually are born with these spikes just underneath their skin. And so it takes about a week for those spikes to kind of grow out and grow up. And there are about, uh, about three to 5,000 spikes on tenrics and hedgehogs alike. And those spikes actually are just like our hair, they'll shed them, uh, they'll get rid of about 50% of those spikes throughout the year, and, and that cricket's gone. <laughs> and they will regrow them. So they never actually look completely bare, but they do shed their quills. You can get, pick them up in their enclosure sometimes, they're really small, um, but those quills are, those quills are just like our hair. So just like with porcupines, they cannot shoot their quills, but they can shed them. So was there any final questions that popped up or you think we're good? No, no more questions. All right, well thank you guys again. This is probably going to be our last education station, so we thank you for coming out for all of these uh, education stations. Be sure to share it with your friends so they can learn all these cool facts about hedgehogs and tenrics. And we will see you guys tomorrow for our last Zoo Creates. Thank awesome. you. Thanks.